Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On today's show, Colin McEwen, Mark Melnick, and myself will explore large brook trout opportunities across beautiful Northern Ontario. Famous writers such as John Garrich have written about brook trout opportunities of Quebec and Labrador, but little known to most anglers, Ontario has a very healthy population of large brook trout, with trips being a fraction of the cost of the other areas. Prime areas to find these beauties and technique, along with proper setup and flies, will be discussed. This promises to be a very exciting show. Stay with us, we'll be right back. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to GoFishInOntario.com Orvis Sporting Traditions Scientific Anglers Able Reels Ross Reels Superfly, fly fishing for everyone. Ontario brook trout fishing is the best in the world. We say this because Ontario is the home of the world record brook trout caught on the Nipigon River by Dr. Cook in 1915. We have famous brook trout rivers such as the Nipigon River, which runs into Lake Superior, and the Sutton River in the far north, which runs into Hudson's Bay. There are many Ontario lakes with fantastic brook trout fishing. There's also hundreds of streams and spring-fed lakes north of Nakina that have outstanding brook trout fishing. We are visiting a few today to give you a taste of what is possible in Ontario. Our first stop is the Nipigon River. The Nipigon River is a drive-to, do-it-yourself destination that has world-class brook trout fishing. The river is about 30 miles long and 656 feet wide at its widest. The river drains Lake Nipigon into Nipigon Bay in Lake Superior, dropping from an elevation of 853 feet to 600 feet. Three hydro dams along the river control the flow of water. Anglers need to take note as to the changing flows due to hydroelectric production. Levels can change as much as six feet in a short time. Caution is recommended when operating a boat these waters are not recommended for the novice boat operator. The setup we use today on the Nipigon River is a floating line to a 15 foot type three sinking leader. Attached to the sinking leader is four feet of 12 pound monofilament line and attached to this is the fly. In order to get the fly near the bottom fast, we also attached a single split shot just above the fly. Smelts are the main feed for brook trout in the Nipigon River, so we basically use two streamer patterns only. The first is a heavily weighted streamer called Beamer Streamer, which gives a large profile. And when the fish were a little more selective, we had success with the Ponsford smelt pattern. Now when you're casting a sink tip, you just can't pick it up and cast it. You gotta bring it in somewhat, get the, the sink tip almost to the to the tip of the rod, and then you do the nice oval cast, outside, over, and away it goes. All right! Woo oh, and it's running at me again. Oh, they're famous for that. Thank God for large arbor reels. Oh, there's a rock there. Get away from that rock. Whoa, yeah. Had to raise up my rod tip. 
because there's a rock there I can see. Oh, oh man, I'm <laughs> strong fish. Uh, he's gone under the boat, I gotta watch this. Come on up, he's getting near, near the top. It's a good fish. This is a really good fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh man, my arm's actually getting tired on this one. Come on over there and get her in the boat, in there. And we got her, all right. That's and that's a good fish. Yeah, a very good fish. <laughs> Oh, that's a big boy. 22 and a quarter. All right. <laughs> now, another fine example of a brook trout in the Nipigon area. I want to thank the town of Red Rock and Nipigon for having us up here. This is absolutely spectacular fishing. Uh, make sure you, you put it on your next fishing trip. It, it's just a wonderful, wonderful industry here. Moving down the river to the Straits of Nipigon, you will find the amazing coaster brook trout. Brook trout, native to Lake Superior, which migrate into tributary rivers to spawn, are called coasters. These brook trout tend to be larger than most other populations of brook trout, often reaching six to seven pounds. Our strategy here is to fish creek mouths that flow into Lake Superior. These areas attract large schools of bait fish, which in turn attract larger predators, such as coasters. Another fish, all right. This zuddler is really working well. Now we're in a lake situation, I can't put much side pressure. So all I gotta do is let him fight, fight the rod itself. Man, big, big head shakes. I can't get over this. And he's gonna go for a run. Good run too, look at this. Holy crow. Oh my goodness, look at the size of them. This one, it's a thick fish, my goodness. Look at the size of this. <laughs> I think this is gonna be my record. Would you look at that? My goodness. Oh, I'm excited about this. I'm shaking, actually. This feels to be more than six, possibly seven. I, I'm not going to try to weigh him. I'm going to get him back in the water as quick as I can. And away he goes. Oh, 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 look at me. I'm shaking. That, I couldn't believe it how hard this thing hit. And the head shakes were unbelievable. Unbelievable. We now join Colin McEwen at Lady Evelyn Lake in Northern Ontario. This area is blessed with small ponds that are just chock full of large brook trout. Colin's strategy was to fish submerged timber and beaver lodges. He used a leech pattern with a slow presentation using his fingers to weave the line. This is a standard still water presentation. <laughs> if this fly hit the water, he turned, looked at it, I gave it a little tiny wiggle, and he nailed it. He looks well, like he's ready. I'll get his head up. Look at that. Look at that. Unbelievable. You know what? I can extend this net. Please do if you can. There we Glad go. we brought this instead of my little net. This was not, my net was not up to the size of fish we have here. Look at this pig. That's a gorgeous brookie. This is where you really want your tippet. I'm using a uh, 4X tippet. So it's not, you know, this is where you want to make sure your tippet's fresh and you're using good quality. Oh, he's getting around the tree. Get him up, get his head up, get his head up, get his head up. You got it. You see there's a lot of beaver cuttings here and that's another concern. Oh, look at this fish. <laughs> this is phenomenal. <laughs> oh, there he goes. I love catching brook trout. The only thing that could have made this better is on a dry fly. Wow. Okay, got him up, got him up. 
We got him. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at that this. might be seven pounds. Oh, Look at wow. it. <laughs> Can you believe that fish? This has got to be one of the Jeez. biggest brook trout I've ever caught. Is this one of the biggest ones you've seen here? Oh, you've uh, seen bigger? This is definitely on the larger side, but okay. they're, they're not uncommon. I just wet my hands. Oh, my goodness. Look Whoa. at that brook trout. Look at that brook trout. Look how thick he is. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that's gorgeous. Let's get, let's get him out of here. They are healthy. Oh, okay. Like, that is a solid six, seven count. Absolutely. Brook wow. Trout. Look at him swimming off. Once again, good show. Good show. <laughs> I got them on a little leech. Oh, that was fantastic. Recommended rods and reels for these large brook trout would be in the seven to eight weight class with matching reels. These fish can be very large and the flies and setups can be very heavy, thus the need for heavy rods. I prefer large arbor reels as you can pick up line faster, but that said, a spindle type of reel will work just fine. Other flies in your arsenal should be zuddlers in various colors, black bunny leeches, woolly buggers in various colors, and don't forget your standard dry flies such as elk eared caddis, goddard caddis, stimulators, adams, and royal coachman. We now join Colin at Esnagi Lake just outside of Shaplow Game Preserve. The interesting part of this location is you can get there either by plane or by rail. What I'm using is a six weight rod and I'm using a sink tip line. You can see it right here. It's a 12 foot sink tip. It's a type three, so it's getting down fairly quick. And what's really important for the setup, a lot of people make the mistake, I've got virtually no leader. It's directly to the sink, sinking line and it's about 12 to 14 inches long. I've got an open loop for the, uh, right to the fly. And as you can see, the fly's got a little bit of spark on it so it gets their attention. And I'm using that. Now you gotta open your cast like this, otherwise you're gonna bang yourself in the back of the head or if you hit Bob, and then you get him really upset. And I'm just casting out through these rocks, gently giving it little pulses and looking for that attack. In fact, I just saw a flash there. And I can make fairly long casts with this uh, type of retrieve. So it's really ideal for these conditions. So what I did is I went to a full sinking line. I'm going to get this guy in the, feels like a decent fish. I went to a full sinking line um, and a long leader. Oh, this is a big fish. This is a very big fish. Um, and uh, I went to an unweighted bully bugger, a black one with just a hint of, with just a hint of uh, oh, green in it. He's coming towards me. There he goes. I'm trying to get him on the reel here. There he is. Yeah, it's a nice fish. That's a nice brook trout. Anywhere you go in the world. Beautiful, oh, beautiful colors. That is just so beautiful. OK, let's see if we get him up. Look well, at that. that look at the nice shoulders on him. Yeah, look. Look at the size of this one. And this is mid-May, so he yeah. hasn't even hit the spawning colors yet. Nope. OK, here he comes. Oh, there's a nice fish. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. OK, so hold them like this. Look how thick that fish is. I mean, it's just humongous. Look at that. Look at that brook trout. Is that not gorgeous? Absolutely. Look at the thickness of them. Beautiful specimen. OK, you get them in the water right away. Look, it's already going away. For those who want to fly in location, but are on a do-it-yourself, bring-your-own-supplies budget, then Sudbury Aviation can take you into remote Dua Lake. 
we meet up with Mark Melnick as he strategizes casting around structure to find brook trout. Figuring out a lake for the first time, there's a single approach that I like to take. It's a three-sided approach that has you look for, number one, oxygenation, number two, look for structure, and number three, look for depth and temperature. Well, depth is easy to find. Structure on shoreline is easy to find, but the oxygenation part is often very difficult. This is a spring-fed lake, and unless we get lucky and are able to find where the spring comes in, we're basically out of luck when it comes to that. One of the things that I like to do is bring along a portable sonar unit, just like this one. Very simple to use, it matches through Bluetooth to your iPhone or your, or your um, uh, iPad or what have you, your, your smart device. And it will give you depth, temperature, and it'll allow you to see those structure breaks anywhere that you deploy it. It's, this one's great, it's called Fish Hunter. Uh, it can go up to 120 feet in depth, and uh, you can use it up to 80 feet away from your device. So all you do is just toss it in, get out your smartphone, Bluetooth it out, and you can figure things out just like that. On the way out here, we talked about three things that you look for when you're trying to break down a lake, oxygenation, structure, and depth. Well, two out of three isn't all that bad right now. As you can see, we've got a rocky shoreline with significant wooden deadfall in it, and I just found a little creek in the south end of this lake that seems to be trickling in, so that might be just enough to bring these brook trout in. We've got deep water out here to 20 feet, and this is a shallow bay. They're staging, getting ready to spawn. This is as good a spot as any to begin. <laughs> so what we've been doing is we've been picking this bay apart. I had a strike out in the middle, and uh, what we've done is, you know, we take a, a bit of a page from ice anglers that fish for brook trout. I was just thinking to myself that, you know, when things slow down when you're ice fishing for brook trout, a lot of times anglers will take their snow machines and they'll zip around the lake a couple times and stir things up. I just backed in to this bay and it was the first cast into the shallows. Now these fish, it is late September, we're actually in the last week of the season in this region in Ontario. Some brook trout areas are already closed. But this one is late September, and these fish are starting to get their spawning colors on, and they're absolutely radiantly beautiful. Now, this is what you come to Northern Ontario for. Pre-spawn brook trout. Probably a three-pound fish. Cannot complain. It is absolutely spectacular. On fly, you simply can't beat it. Fly just pops out, make sure he's good. I think he's good to go <laughs> by all intents and purposes. He's ready to get back at finding a mate. Beautiful. For avid brook trout anglers, there are certain destinations that provoke the imagination, such as destinations in Labrador come to mind. That said, Sutton River in far northern Ontario is every bit as good as Labrador. For the ultimate canoeing adventure, Hearst Air offers 11-day trips that start at the headwaters of the Sutton River and finish at Hudson's Bay. To be sure, there are places where you can catch larger brook trout, but for sheer numbers of honest-to-goodness three to five pound fish, the Sutton River can't be topped. We join Colin McEwen for what he describes as the best brook trout fishing he has ever had. This is what I call standard here in Sutton, and it's easy wading, it's not a lot of big rocks, and what I've done is come out here, and I'm gonna cast either to the left or the right, depending upon where the, the current breaks are, the holes. And I'm also looking at that phone line. And I cast across, say over here to the left, downriver, keep the rod tip up, and then I wiggle. And it brings it across. It makes that wake that is so tantalizing to a brook trout. The key is you let the fly line, a little bit of it be in the current, and that gives you the pull on the fly, which traditionally you don't want with a top water, but with these mice patterns is what you want and you wiggle it across. Oh, wow! Oh, ho, ho, ho. 
What an aggressive take. This fish just hammered it, Gilbert. Well, this fish is really strong. Oh, sweet. Uh, and you know what's amazing? This is a small fish. Here on Sutton River, this is a small fish. Long time. Okay. I'll just quickly take out the hook. Barbless. Let me show you. It's a female. Look at those colors. Beautiful speckled trout. I got lucky and conditions were perfect to use mouse patterns. But have these other patterns with you when you visit the Sutton. Conehead zuddlers in a variety of colors. Leech patterns such as bunny leeches or woolly buggers in black. Mice patterns such as the shaving brush work well, as does bass poppers in various colors. The brook trout fishing in Ontario is epic and we highly recommend you visit. The new fly fisher is planning on doing more of the affordable do-it-yourself destinations in the future. We hope you enjoyed this episode and for more information on the show, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to GoFishInOntario.com Orvis Sporting Traditions Scientific Anglers Able Reels Ross Reels Superfly, fly fishing for everyone. To learn more about the new fly fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook.